What's up, y'all? My name is Devin, the DIY Lawn Coach. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for coming back for another podcast. Wow. Uh, so Halloween is over, which is kind of a bummer because that's kind of a milestone thing for us lawn care guys. But that's behind us. Um, and so wanted to get on here, make a video for you guys, make a, a quick podcast and just kind of cover some topics. One of which, uh, the main topic that I want to cover today is why lawn care is so hard and a little secret there. That's going to be, that's kind of a trick question, but I want to update you guys on a couple things going on with me. Uh, number one, we're going to talk about uh, a Facebook group that I have. We're going to talk about a uh, channel update. Yes, things are changing on the channel, as things always seem to do, which is not a bad thing, but it is what it is, and we're going we're gonna to talk about it. Then we're going to talk about what's next, right? So I just mentioned Halloween is over. So what does that mean? What are we doing? What do we need to be looking forward to? You know, don't get too depressed. Uh, yes, the lawn season's coming to an end, but it's not over. And then I want to kind of share with you guys uh, just a little bit of personal stuff going on. I had an opportunity to break out the drone and fly around at my church for a fall festival. So I want to show you guys some pictures of that. So thank you so much for joining the podcast. Let's get into it. All right, guys. As I mentioned, you know, um, I just want to let you guys know, if, if you didn't know, uh, that I have a Facebook group. Now, I know there's a lot of them out there. Uh, Lawn Care Nut is probably the most popular, which is awesome, which is kind of why I started mine. Um, and really, the main reason why I started that group was just to give you guys an opportunity to connect with me uh, or others, you know, others like us that have cool season lawns and you know, the Facebook group is a great way to do that. It's a great way to, you know, kind of meet people uh, with like, like-minded interest, ask questions. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love for you guys to join it. Uh, there's no, no two ways about it. I, I want you guys to join it. So uh, you can check it out on uh, Facebook at the DIY Lawn Coach group. Um, you do have to uh, kind of fill out some information because I want to make sure that, you know, you're not a a salesman trying to sell me something. That's one thing that I get a lot of, especially having a YouTube channel is people reach out to me trying to sell me stuff, graphic designers and web page designers and things like that. And so I don't, I don't want any of that junk, any of that mess, uh, bogging us down. So ask a few, a few questions and, uh, we'll prove you. We'll get you on the group. Love to have you. Please consider joining. Love to have you. So as things always do, they change, right? That's, that's life. It's the way it works. Well, this channel is no different. Uh, and I know we, we have a lot of people that are new, a lot of people that have been here since the beginning, but, uh, if you don't know, my name is Devin. I'm the DIY lawn coach. I uh, started this YouTube channel back in March, April of this year. Wow. What a year it's been. It's been incredible. Uh, and it's a lot of thanks to you guys that we've grown so fast, but let me let me back up for a second and tell you guys why I started this channel because a lot of people uh, kind of ask that question. Um, so I have a full time job. I work, um, you know, from nine to five or eight to five, seven to five, whatever you want to call it, and it's my full time job, and that's what pays the bills and that's what keeps the lights on at home. But uh, I really enjoy lawn care. I've been uh, taking care of my lawn for 10, 15 years, and over those ten or fifteen years, I have. I believe I have gained a lot of knowledge. Uh, I spent a lot of time reading uh, articles, um, kind of doing my own research, you know, trial and error, just like what you guys are doing. And I had, I have a really nice lawn. I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat that. I, I do. I'm very proud of that. I think if you have a nice lawn, you too should also be very proud of that. And um, there's a lot of people who envy people like us who have nice lawns, but it's all good. So, a couple years ago, I had a couple neighbors in my neighborhood. I wasn't living in this neighborhood at the time. Uh, I had a couple neighbors reach out and say, "Hey, can you tell me what you're doing to have you know such a, a great looking lawn?" I was like, "Sure." 
you know, and I told them, hey, you know, make sure you're watering. And when I put down fertilizer, I, I want you to put down fertilizer. And, you know, he'd come over and say, hey, what can you tell me what kind of weed this is? Or, you know, and just one thing led to another. And I was like, you know what? Uh, there's a, a guy on YouTube, Bermuda Grass Central. Awesome guy. Cool season line. Cool. Uh, sorry. Warm season guy. And I thought, man, I, I see his videos like he does lawn coaching, like people ask and for his information and he charges them for it and people pay for it. So I was like, well, why, why can't I do that? I mean, I'm, you know, giving the milk away for free. So anyway, I started uh, lawn coaching some of my friends and, uh, you know, not not charging them a whole lot of money, but, you know, it, it, the gas to get to and from and and that started four or five years ago. And now I've got uh I've got some full-time clients that I take care of, write lawn plans for them. And, and so if you've, you know, trying to write something down is one thing, right. And then showing somebody how to do something is another, uh, you know, that's what makes this YouTube thing so awesome is that I can literally show you how to do it. Right. Um, rather than just tell you in words. And so with my clients, I, got the bright idea. Hey, why don't I start making some YouTube videos, videos and put them on YouTube showing folks how to, how to do things, how to read a bag of fertilizer rather than just write it down on a piece of paper, or write it in one of their lawn plans. I, I actually would show them how to, how do you, you know, how do you set your, your, how do you sharpen your mower blades? Things like that. Just, just things that we as uh, most lawn enthusiasts kind of take advantage, you know, take for granted. These, these guys didn't know anything. They just kind of start from blank. And so I started making these videos and I was really uncomfortable. Uh, it's not something I was comfortable doing, but if I was making it for those guys, then I was okay. And then I got the bright idea. Well, why don't I put that out on YouTube and see what happens? Um, and looking back on it, those videos are awful. Uh, in my opinion, um, I just, I'm not, you know, I know to you guys, maybe I seem comfortable like I'm doing this, but this is very uncomfortable. You know, it's not natural to stare into a camera and just talk, but that's what I did. And it worked really well. And my clients seemed to really like it, enjoy it. And then as the YouTube thing kind of kept growing and growing and growing, and I kept getting subscribers and I was like, wow, I mean, you know, I've got all, all this knowledge, uh, that I want to utilize to help people. And it doesn't do, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I, I believe um, Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and he calls us to do higher and better and, than, than, what we, than what we do. And I feel like God gave me a talent, gave me, you know, the know-how, the ability. And, you know, if I don't do something with it, then um, I'm not glorifying him. And so I... You know, when I started making these videos, I wanted to help people, I, you know, whether that's making, you know, helping them have a beautiful grass or whatever it is, uh, I want to help people. And God gave me the the ability, the knowledge to know how to take care of grass for whatever reason. Not sure why he did that. I'm sure he's got a, a bigger plan for me, but that's what we're doing. And so the channel just continues to grow. We, we hit a thousand subscribers this year, which for a lawn care YouTube channel, there are so many channels out there for, for lawn care. So for you guys to take the time and watch my videos and give them a like and subscribe is incredible. I love it. It's honestly, that's what keeps me going. Uh, you know, the day that you guys quit liking the videos and you quit subscribing, I'll quit doing it. Um, you know, I'll continue to do my lawn coaching thing on the side, which is great. But, you know, if you're not going to like the videos and you're not going to watch them, I'm not, you know, it takes a lot of time. I mean, that's, that's something that people I don't think realize when it comes to making a video. I mean, imagine having to stop every time you, you know, are mowing to show somebody something, you know, and that takes time and it's energy and I'm not complaining. I love it. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy helping people. And so that's, that's where we're at. But I say all of that to say, right. The channel is going to be changing. Uh, when I started this channel, I committed myself to making two videos every single week. And in order for the channel to grow, uh, that's what they say you got to do. So I was making, I made two videos every single week, rain, sunshine, vacation, didn't matter. I did it. And I'm very proud of that. 
And I think that attributed a lot to my growth on this channel is just kind of getting, getting it out there. And I think I've improved. Um, hopefully you guys think that too. Um, but things are changing, uh, you know, as, as winter is kind of approaching, you know, there's not a whole lot to talk about in the lawn, honestly. Uh, you know, things have really slowed down. You know, the warm season guys are, are all but shut down at this point. You know, it's November, cool season, you know, here in the transition zone, we're still going pretty strong. But, you know, a lot of my viewers are in Maryland and New Jersey. You got a lot of New Jersey guys out there, Michigan, Ohio, uh, Dakotas. I've got a lot of people up in Washington, Oregon, a lot of cool season guys out there. And they're kind of slowing down. And so they're not checking it out, which is fine. That's great. It's it's all part of the channel. And But for me, it takes a lot of time for me to make these videos. And, you know, things are kind of picking up for me on the personal side. I've got two kids, a wife. Uh, my son just made uh, varsity basketball. So, so proud of him for doing that as a sophomore, which is just incredible. It's, he loves basketball. He's a... I, he lives and breathes and he's one of those kids that like when he's going down the hallway, like he does the the crossover move and, and shoots and all that stuff. He's crazy about basketball and I love it. Super awesome kid. And then my daughter plays uh travel volleyball. Uh, she'll pepper with you or anybody at any time. She loves it. Uh, and I have two great kids and being part of their lives and being a supportive dad to them is, is really important too. And so in order for me to go and do these things, you know, it takes away from the, the YouTube channel, which is fine. Um, you know, it, it's all part of it, but you know, days are shorter, you know, uh, time changes actually tomorrow as I'm filming this time, time will change tonight at midnight. So it's going to start getting dark at five 30 in the afternoon, I guess. And so that just leaves little time to, to shoot videos and do the YouTube thing, you know, and we're going into winter things are slowing down anyway. So it's, it's all good. I just wanted you guys to know that, you know, things are changing you know, and this YouTube is, uh, you know, it's a side, a side gig for me. It's just, you know, um, that's why I ask you guys to help support me, support the channel, go to my website. I've got links for stuff there. I've got merch hats. Um, you know, that kind of stuff, all that stuff helps YouTubers. And, and, you know, I, I don't want to ask you guys for your money. I think you guys work hard for your money. I work hard for my money. I want you guys to keep your money. But if you're going to buy something, I would ask that you, you know, help me support the channel. It'd be great. Um, so I'll leave that at that. All right. So let's talk about what's next. So Halloween's over. Uh, and you know, Halloween for us cool season guys is, is kind of a milestone, right? I mean, it, it's a date on the calendar. You know, I, I know I, I just mowed earlier today and the lawn is absolutely on fire. I love it. This is why, this is why we do it. I mean, this is why we have cool season lawns for, for days like this. We don't get many of them. We get probably two weeks in the spring where it looks like this. And we get about two weeks in the fall where it looks like this. And this is why we do it. Uh, for those of you that play golf, I, I used to play golf before I had kids. And for those of you that play golf, you know that that time, you, you could play like crap all year long or all, all, all day long. And you're just about to put your driver away. And you're like, I'm not, I can't hit it. I'm not hitting with this driver. And then you're like, I'll just give it one more chance. And you just ding the ball right down, straight down the middle of the fairway. And you're like, <gasps> And you're like, this is why I play golf. Or maybe you hit an iron shot and you drive it, you know, six feet pin high. And you're just like, this is why I love golf. And it's just that little glimpse of, of perfection, I guess. Uh, and so that's where we're at today and had a great time mowing. Lawn looks great, but Halloween is over. So now what, right? So I told you guys things are kind of slowing down, and they are. Weather here is still very warm. I mean, we're, we're mid-70s, we're 80s, you know, nights in the 40s, and gosh, it is so easy right now. It's it's strange. You know, you go through the hustle and bustle of summer. You're mowing, you got, you know, you're worried about fungus, and you're, you're watering, and you're putting down this, and excuse me, you're putting down that. And then you get to fall like this, and you're like, this is weird. Like, what do I do? I, you know, the, the lawn's kind of like on autopilot, just kind of takes care of itself. But, um, you know, 
That's okay. That's good. So what do we need to be doing? Right. So just we're, we're keeping up with our mowing, right? I know I'm mowing once a week now. Uh, water is super important. You know, a lot of people think, oh, cause it's cooler. Uh, you know, you still got to water. Um, you don't necessarily have to water a full, you know, uh, you know, that inch per week thing. I mean, the days, the days, you know, the sun's not really beating down on the ground, so you don't really have to hammer it with water all the time. You can actually end up overwatering, which is a bad thing. You'll notice the grass kind of turn into yellowish color. So you don't want to overwater, but you got to water. You got to keep the plant moist. Um, you know, keep mowing. Uh, you know, we're, we got a lot of us have baby grass. I myself do. It's probably the fourth or fifth time I've mowed it. So it's just now starting to fatten up and widen out and, you know, starting to really look good, blend in really well with the other grass that's, that's surrounding. It looks great. You know, uh, fertilizer, we're still pushing fertilizer, trying to get as much growth, you know, uh, winter is a stressful time for our cool season lawn. And so we're trying to fatten it up and get it ready, get a full, nice full belly going into, uh, into, you know, the, the, the winter time when, you know, the lawn kind of goes dormant and, you know, depending on where you live, you're, you know, you're in a different, you know, you're in a different, uh, part of the country. You're, you're maybe you're a couple weeks ahead of us where we are, but things have been really warm. And as long as, so let me, let me back up for a second. So, Everything we do in the lawn is weather dependent. Okay. So if, if we're, you know, I, I don't subscribe to the it's March. So we have to do this, right. Or it's June. You can't do this. I am a weather, de, you know, weather dependent person. And that's what I believe. So as long as the weather continues to stay warm, like it is, I'm going to keep fertilizing and I'm going to keep watering and I'm going to keep mowing and I'm going to keep doing the same things that I've been doing. And I'm not going to say, Oh gosh, it's November 2nd. I can't put down fertilizer. You know, it's again, so it's all weather dependent. So, you know, if you live up in Wisconsin or, you know, Minnesota, you got snow. Well then, yeah, you're done. You know, you're not, maybe you can put down one more fertilizer, you know, for, for your winterizer, but Everything we do in the lawn is weather dependent. So just think about that in the back of your mind when you're making decisions, you know, whether it's, you know, weed control or whatever, it's, it's all about, it's all about the weather. So keeping up with our leaves, super important. we got to keep leaves off the lawn. I've, I've said that a couple of times now, you know, watering, fertilizing, mowing. Uh, and like I said, I mean, it's just, it's just super easy. We're like on an autopilot right now. The lawn just almost takes care of itself. And that's kind of weird. So what am I doing now, right? So I, I'm, I'm getting ready for next year. You know, that's, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't have a whole lot of money. And so I, you know, I kind of budget like, like a lot of you guys do. Uh, you know, I don't want to come next year and have to buy all my fungicides and my fertilizers and my pesticides and uh, my biostimulants and all those things. I start kind of buying them here and there. Uh, you know, maybe ask Santa Claus for some, uh, you know, some stocking stuffers, maybe, maybe some GCI gift cards or, you know, maybe some propiconazole in a, you know, in a one gallon container for Christmas, you know, get creative, get fun with it. And maybe I'm the only, am I the only person who gets fungicide for, for Christmas? I, mean, I can't be right, but that's what I'm doing. Right. So I get, I go ahead and start getting my stuff for next year. It just helps me budget and, and stay, you know, financially, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the wife's good side when I start buying all this stuff. So you can be doing that, uh, you know, looking at you know, something else that I always do, especially at the end of the year. Now I follow a lawn plan and I have a lawn plan and that's really what I follow. But at the end of the year, I always make notes for myself because like, for example, you know, whether it comes to watering or, Hey, you know, make sure, you know, at the end of, June, you kind of cut back your watering in this area or, you know, watch out for army worm. You know, one year I had army worms. So watch out for army worms one year and just kind of, you know, just make notes, things that worked, things that didn't work, uh, things that, you know, cause when you get in the heat of the moment next year, you're not going to remember now, which, which area of the lawn or, you know, what, 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 you know, do I, what, do I not apply this or whatever? So just, Make notes for yourself. I find that really helpful for me. Keeps me, you know, uh, I just actually, I, I pull it up in the notes app in my phone and that's where I put it. And so, you know, 
you know, maybe, maybe you raised the mowing height last year and, and that didn't work out so well for you. And, and now you're like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to do that again. Or maybe I want to try that again or whatever it is, whatever the note is, make yourself a note, follow that and see how that works out for you. And that's something that, that works well for me, but that's it. You know, we're just going to continue mowing, you know, waiting for the weather to kind of change here. We haven't had a, a good freeze. Yeah. You know, I've got an irrigation system. So I just made a video you guys will see on how to winterize your system. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, taking care of your mower, blades, keep your blades sharp, all that stuff. Just the, you know, again, autopilot. But that's what we're doing. That's what we got going on in fall right now. All right, so the big topic that I want to cover today is why is lawn care so hard? Well, if you have a cool season lawn, uh, it's hard because it's a cool season lawn. Uh, I, I honestly get a lot of, I get jealous of guys who, who have warm season lawns because it seems like the, the you know, you know B Bermuda, for example, I mean, the more you, you know, mess with it or piss it off, the, the better it looks, right? How, how awesome would it be to have a grass type that the more you messed with it or roughed it up, for example, it got to look better. How awesome would that be? But we don't. We're cool season, uh, and cool seasons are very finicky. They're you know, except for right now, they're they're hard to grow. So they are. I mean, lawn care in a cool season world is hard. There's no two ways about it. Um, but like anything that you do, uh, there is a little bit of misconception there. Uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of people in my circle, you know, say, "Oh, I don't have time." you know, to, to take care of lawn or, I, you know, lawn care is just too hard, I, you know, or I could never have a lawn like that. And I'm, I'm here to tell you today that yes, you can have a lawn that looks like mine. Um, now, is it hard? I mean, I'm sure a pilot, you know, I'm not a pilot, uh, but I would think that flying a plane would be hard if I didn't know how to fly a plane. But if you don't know some basic things about lawn care, yeah, I mean, I would, yeah, I'll say lawn care is hard. If you, if you're not, you know, if you're not, if you never fertilize your lawn, yeah, lawns, lawn care is going to be hard for you. Or if, you know, you don't have, you have a 20,000 square foot uh, lawn and you're using a, a 21 inch push mower. Yeah. Lawn care is going to be hard for you. Um you know, I think about, and I made this video earlier in the year talking about, you know, how I got a nice lawn. And a lot of it comes from, you know, I said, knowledge is power. And that's true. The more, when you, when you make that transition from lawn care is a chore to lawn care is a passion or something that you look forward to, when you make that switch, that is when lawn care will no longer become hard. Uh, you'll almost embrace it in, in, a, in a way. And, you know, for me, when I was younger, uh, you know, taking care of a lawn was hard because I, I didn't know what I was doing. And everybody, we, we are all on our own little journey. We're all in different points in our lawn care journey. Uh, I'm at one point, you are at another point. And so what what may be hard for you isn't hard for me. And so when you know, you get in the chat section of a YouTube video and you start talking about, oh, you know, you big dummy, you don't put down a pound of nitrogen or whatever it is. Well, maybe that person doesn't know that. And so, you know, they're in a, they're in a different spot. Um, so we're all on our own little lawn care journey. Um, just to, to kind of put that, you know, put a bow on that. The other thing I want to say is that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, everybody's lawn is that maybe they're looking, their expectations are different than yours. Someone might look at my lawn and think it's not, not that great. Or, you know, someone might look at your lawn and say, you know, that's not that great. Uh, theirs is better, you know? So and someone, you know, someone else might look at their lawn and say, you know, it's, it's got weeds, but it's green, you know, so that that's okay with them. So again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What you view is different than what other body, you know, that other, you imagine if everybody just drove Volkswagen Beetles, like 
the same color. How boring would life be? You know, but the fact that we can have our own grass type and, you know, it can be, uh, you know, one person's dark green is not what somebody else likes. And so, you know, the other thing that I want to say is lawn care is a journey and not a destination. And I think um, the older I get, I mentioned that I'm 40 years old. A lot of people don't believe that I am. I just turned 40 back in uh, June. And as the older I get, the more I realize that life is the same way and grass is, is the same. So thinking that you're going to somehow reach the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, uh, that doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> hopefully I'm not uh, breaking your heart there when I say that, but you're not going to like one day just like reach the destination of a perfect lawn and then like it's just going to stay that way. It doesn't like it. Life doesn't work that way. It's not going to work that way. And so when you embrace the journey that everybody is on and you start, you know, researching and, and, and looking at lawn care from that perspective, for me, everything changed. You know, when, you know, I mentioned, you know, knowledge is power, you know, something would be hard if you didn't know a whole lot about it. So, you know, learning about fungicides and learning about pest control and how they work and um, certainly makes it a lot easier. It's also a lot of fun. I mean, I, I just, maybe I'm just crazy, but I, I enjoy things like that. You know, something else that makes lawn care hard is like God didn't make the earth to have perfect tall fescue at four inches and be dark green color. Like he didn't design the earth to be that way. Think about what would happen to your lawn if you all of a sudden quit mowing and quit fertilizing. What would it do? It would return back to, you know, being full of weeds and overgrown and things like that. That's the way God created it. And so we're battling against that. You know, we're battling insects and we're battling uh, weather, uh, heat, humidity, animals. You know, <laughs> I mean, you guys wrote... And talked about how many squirrels are out eating your new grass seed or tear, digging up holes in your in your lawn while you're trying to have a beautiful lawn. And it's like, well, what do I do about those squirrels? Well, nothing, because there's nothing you can do. They're squirrels, and you don't have control over squirrels, you know. Like, and so just just like deal with it and understand. And it's hard. Look, I get it. It's hard. It sucks. You're working your tail off to have a nice looking lawn, and a freaking squirrel is out there eating your, you know, tearing up your grass. And it's frustrating and that, yeah, that makes it hard. <laughs> you know, you're dealing with stupid squirrels. Uh, weather's, you know, another challenge, you know, uh, just the heat and humidity, especially with a cool season lawn is just relentless and it never seems to give up. And then once you realize that everything you're doing is really out of your control, uh, you know, you just, you just doing the best you can. Uh, and so, yeah. That makes it hard. Yeah. So lawn care is hard in that aspect. Another thing that makes it hard is the, the amount of information that's out there now. Um, you know, I don't, con I am not a professional. I do not proclaim to know everything. Uh, I lean really heavily on turf professionals. Uh, you know, I have, uh, buddies in the industry rely on them. Um, but I take even the things that they say, you know, for with a grain of salt, because they're not, they don't have my lawn. And they don't have my microclimate and things like that. But, you know, a lot of it is experience. Um, and one thing I will say, too, if, if you've never reached out to your local extension office, I highly suggest doing that. Um, you know, develop a relationship with them. You know, they, they are turf professionals. So when it comes to identifying fungus or an, an insect or whatever the problem you might be having, yeah, reach out to them, establish a relationship, be able to have somebody to email or, or call and ask for help. But there's a lot of information out there. A lot of it's good, a lot of it's bad. Uh, and that in itself makes it confusing because one guy will say this and he maybe he's a turf professional and he's like, oh, you, you know, you need to spoon feed throughout the summer. And then you talk to another turf professional and they're like, oh, I would never do that. I would, you, you have to put down, you know, at least half a pound. 
nitrogen, whatever. I mean, you understand my point. It's there's a lot of misinformation and there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, I guess. And so that in itself makes lawn care hard because you're getting a lot of conflicting mixed opinions on things. And at the end of the day, just do, you know, do what you're going to do. Um, take good notes uh, and get better over time. But I think once you realize that it's a journey and not a destination, uh, that really changed it for me. And then the last thing I'll say about this too, and, and why lawn care is so stinking hard sometimes is because, and it's usually me and it's because I'm impatient and, uh, raise your hand if you're impatient, not just with lawn care. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, we're, we're human, right? We're just not, I mean, we, we, we all have instant, we all want instant gratification. We want things here, right? We want it right now. And if you know anything, talk to anybody in lawn care and they will tell you that it's all about patience. Um, you know, I, I've said this before, Rome was not built in one day and your lawn is not going to be overnight looking great unless you go get some sod, which is kind of cheating, but you know, uh, you know, so you just, you gotta be patient. You know, so I know for me personally, you know, you, you see things happen, you know, maybe you see changes in the lawn and, you know, you, like you think it's fungus. And so, you know, the, the right thing to do is to investigate and identify that fungus and make sure that you're what you're dealing with, but that's not what we do. We instantly throw something down to try to get, you know, try to get it taken care of, or, you know, we want, you know, we, we're just not, we're just not patient. And, and a lot of, you know, a lot of us, when we throw down grass seed in this, in the fall, you know, we think our lawn should look a certain way and truth be told, it takes really two or three years for that turf to fully mature. Um, and a lot of us just don't have two or three years to sit around and wait, I guess. And so it just, it takes, it takes time. It takes patience. Um, you know, there's a lot of controversy, I guess, around biostimulants and do they work? Are they a waste of time? Are they a waste of money? I'm sure somebody in the comment section will leave and tell me that, that they're a waste of time, but you know, to me, I don't think they are, uh, but they do take time to develop in the soil. And I'm sure there's turf studies that say this and there's turf studies that say that, but I digress. That's probably for another video, but I guess I would challenge you to, to just stay patient when, when it comes to lawn care and just take the, take the long road, understand that, you know, you have to be consistent with your mowing. You have to be consistent about your watering. And that's, that's sometimes it's really hard to do. We, you know, we all have full-time jobs and we're working, we got things going on and it's hard to, it's hard to stay consistent. It's hard to stay patient. So is lawn care hard? Yeah. The, yeah, I know, um, you know, flying a plane would be hard if you didn't know what you were doing. So, yeah. Lawn care can be hard, but invest it, you know, invest time in it and, and look at it more as a, um, you know, as a hobby, as opposed to a chore. And I promise it'll change for you. All right, y'all. So the last thing that I want to talk about is something fun that I did over Halloween. I wish uh, I, I, you know, I love hanging out with little kids dressed up and, you know, and, and, you know, when Batman walks up to your door and rings your doorbell, I mean, is that not the coolest thing ever? Or, you know, when this little princess shows up at your door and she's wanting candy, I just, I love that. Um, and so I hate that I didn't get to do that, but, um, I did have an opportunity to go to my church. And, um, as you guys know, I just got my FAA, um, license to fly drones, which is really cool. Had a lot of fun. That was Probably one of the more challenging things that I've done recently was have to study for that test. Man, that was a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't get the sarcasm in my voice, that was a lot of fun. But I got an opportunity to go to the go to my church and and fly my drone and take some pictures. Um, you know, and it was a great turnout. Had a lot of fun. We had probably two or three thousand people from the community that came, and we had hot dogs and hamburgers, and we had a, a candy trail for the kiddos. They had uh, some paintball. Uh, there, was a, uh, there was a bunch of food trucks, and we had a live uh, band that was playing. It was just an awesome experience. Um, and I got to uh, get out there and fly my drone around, which was really cool. I've never gotten to do that. And, uh, you know, 
I, I learned a lot from that experience and hopefully I can continue to, to grow that, that, you know, that, that portion of my business, if you will, is, is uh, aerial photography. It's really cool. And, you know, you know, taking pictures of lawns and all that's kind of cool. And, you know, flying around my church with all those people was just a different, a different aspect and had a lot of fun. Uh, it was a great way to spend my Halloween. I hope you guys had a great Halloween as well. Uh, you know, just wanted to, again, like I talked about in the beginning of the podcast, one of the things that I want to do as a Christian is utilize my skills and, you know, the, the skill set that, that God has blessed me with to try to glorify him. So if the pictures that get, that get used, you know, end up turning into making someone want to come to our church and, you know, come back to that fall festival and, and, and have a relationship with Jesus because of it, then man, that makes it all worthwhile. So thank you guys so much for checking out the podcast and listen to this old man, just ramble on, uh, for a couple, couple minutes here. Uh, it's been an awesome year. Uh, make sure you guys are giving the video a like and, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I uh, love to hear from you guys. I really do. It just, you know, it, I, you know, I do all of this for you guys. Um, and, and, you know, I, I want to be able to have a, you know, a conversation with you, ask a question, join my Facebook page. Love to see you guys over there. Um, so that just about does it for this. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast. My name is Devin. I am the DIY lawn coach. I can't wait to see you in the lawn. Peace. Peace.